Hi friends, C-Note here. Uh, my name is also Christian Rivera, and welcome. This is the Cosmic Calibration for INTPs program. So thank you for being here, thank you for listening, and thank you for being a part of me and my life. I know some of you have come over from my podcast, Dopamine, which you can te- check out at dopamine.life, D-O-P-E-A-M-I-N-E.life, if you have not checked out that podcast. That podcast is where I talk about mental health and calibration for anyone who's trying to develop a creative career. And for me, as an INTP, I wanted to be able to share some of my learnings and lessons that I have picked up over the past 33 years of my life, mostly since I was maybe 10 years old experiencing all of these challenges, that I wanted to be able to share with you guys in a way that is, um, you know, hopefully helpful and powerful. The idea of this cosmic calibration is for you to understand as an INTP that it is not just about the stereotypes that you come across. Being an INTP is something more than that. It is more than just the typical stereotype of being stuck in your mom's basement, uh, playing you know, D&D and eating Cheetos and Mountain Dew all the time. Like there's more to life than that. And I know that you know that. I know that there's something within INTPs that naturally pulls us into this feeling of wanting to do something more than what society kind of presents or makes us feel like we're capable of. So throughout the program, we'll be talking in quite depth, quite intense depth about all these different concepts about love and patience and talking about the universe as a whole in a way. The universe and not necessarily in like a healing, spiritual, sort of um, uh, vague, energetic way, but, but in a way that helps an INTP understand the vastness of our capability of pattern recognition and connection. So I want to talk about whenever I do reference the universe or some sort of intuitive reference of that, It's somewhat spiritual, but it's mostly in a practical sense of understanding a sense of gratitude in our place in the universe, right? So our place as a human being, as an INTP specifically, because some of the challenges of learning who we are as an INTP comes from really feeling like we are both simultaneously significant and insignificant at the same time. That is a massive challenge of feeling like you want to be someone that's important to society, but also recognizing your insignificance in a way that gives you a sense of gratitude for existing. You know, So that's something we're going to talk about throughout the course of this program. And just so that you guys know, if you're coming in here completely fresh and not understanding what an INTP is, or maybe you haven't had much exposure to education around what an INTP is, we're going to take some time to break that down right now. So, first of all, INTP sounds for stands for introverted, intuitive, thinking, and perceiving type. That means you're naturally introverted, you're a little bit more uh, likely to spend quieter time to yourself or appreciate and enjoy that. So you're more likely to be a natural introvert, which means you're gonna to wanna to spend more time on your own by yourself, more naturally, and especially when you are processing information, you're gonna spend that time to yourself working through a lot of those details. Intuitive typically stands for that pattern recognition. So you are going about the world, not necessarily just taking in information based on what you see, smell, taste, hear, etc but you're gonna see patterns between those things that you personally experience in your life and start to look for ways that you can start to future pace a little bit, that you're more willing to take risks and speculate and ask questions about the things that you're experiencing to determine what is coming next, what could be coming next, or how you can influence what is coming next. And then thinking type means that you are someone that is going to be more of a thinker. You are someone who is being more so logically oriented. You're gonna be looking at the data, the facts, all of the stuff that is removed from emotion that is just objective. Things that are, that that are, that things that are is. (laughs) Things that, things that that just exist. And the, the difference between an INTP and an INTJ, for example, is the ability to go to granular detail for an INTP, that you're gonna be looking at the specific data points. So, for example, whereas an INTJ might look at 
earth science from a perspective of uh, continents and planets. An INTP might be looking at it from the perspective of like atoms and bits of information in that sort of way, right? That's not exclusive to those types. I think an INTJ can certainly look at that from a perspective, but from that perspective. But what I mean is that that dichotomy is really the difference is that an INTP will go into such granular detail to try to understand the whole. So that's really what I mean by that. And then perceiving type means that you're just a little bit more laid back and you're a little bit more willing to put yourself out there in the world, or you should be at least, <laughs> um, that, that when you're out in the world, you're not really caring about perception as much, that you are being free form and learning in the outside world so that you can take all of that information and maybe be a little bit more serious in your head and in the work that you do. So privately, you're gonna be a little bit more organized or organized in your head. Whereas publicly, you're gonna be a little bit more improvisational and freeform and ready to go with the flow. Whereas again, the difference between an INTP and an INTJ in that sense is that an INTJ is gonna to want to be a little bit more prepared to go into the outside world. Think of Batman, for example. He's not an INTJ, I think he's an ESTJ. Uh, depends on your interpretation of the character. But uh, Batman is typically like a TJ caricature. He's someone that is going to be uh, always prepared in some form for any situation, right? <laughs> that is sort of like the, uh, the TJ uh, idealism that they would be prepared for any situation possible. An INTP, we feel like we are going to be prepared, but in a way that we're just adaptable. So we're gonna be practicing our thoughts, our ideas, our the things that we want to, um, to work on, to practice, and that when we get into the outside world, we're kind of prepared to not only learn new things as we approach um, new situations, but being able to adapt to um, the, the needs that we have to give information, you know? So like, I'm doing this freeform. You know, this is why this is my style. I sit in front of the camera and I just talk. <laughs> you know, I, have, I was thinking in the shower this morning about some of the ideas that I wanted to share um, around this, but for the most part, I wanted to, you know, I, I just sit in front of the camera and I kind of work it out as I'm talking, you know? So in the way that, you know, maybe a musician is gonna practice um, notes, so scales, songs, and then albums or sets. You know, an INTP practices data information, knowledge, and wisdom. So the way that I'm ruminating in my head over and over again in the shower or for a few days on topics, it, I'm going to take that time to be practicing in my own head in the, the way that a musician is gonna practice before they go on stage. You know, um, specifically like a jazz musician, someone who's going to be kind of understanding rhythms and scales and the ways that they can work with other people so that when you go and play, you can adjust to what's coming to you. So that's kind of the way that I approach this. I approach any of my courses. That's the way I approach podcasting. It's the way I approach YouTube. It's the way I approach everything, is, is allowing myself to be free form and comfortable um, through a series of practicing in my head some varying ideas that I want to say and share with the world. So uh, part of understanding yourself as an INTP is understanding the cognitive functions, which is something that we'll kind of address and go through this in this course, but I feel like for the most part I'm going to do what I can to speak from a um, from a life perspective. What I mean by that is like sharing my story and sharing concepts and ideas, but we will reference Myers-Briggs throughout this course as well. So it's important for you to understand a little bit of what that means. So again, INTP, Introverted Intuitive Thinking Perceiving, is a four letter code that describes the cognitive functions that live within an INTP. And those four cognitive functions, the four main functions that an INTP has is introverted thinking, extroverted intuition, introverted sensing, and extroverted feeling. Now you can imagine those being basically in a hierarchical order. So introverted thinking is your dominant function and then essentially accounts for 80% of your personality. It is something that is going to be your main driver, the way that you think, the way that you go through life and all of that stuff. 
Your secondary function is extroverted intuition, and that's going to be uh, more responsible for about 10 to 20% of your, your relationship with reality. Introverted sensing is going to be more 5 to 10%, and extroverted feeling is going to be less than 5%. So to kind of quickly go through what each of those mean, introverted thinking is essentially what is responsible for that data-driven desire, logic, information, um, just analyzing things for what they are and connecting those dots, doing intense research, withholding a lot of information in our brains. We are capable of so much when it comes to that. And I love that so much about being an INTP. I think uh, that's probably one of the number one compliments I get as an INTP is when someone says to me, oh my God, you are just capable of withholding so much. And uh, I think the power comes from really making that useful information versus useless information. Um, the secondary function is extroverted intuition, which is going to be your main point of potential growth. That is what is allowing you to get out into the world. It's what's allowing you to get to make connections in the outside world so that people like and love and appreciate you. Um, you go out and experience what is. The difference between introverted thinking and extroverted intuition is that you can do research on your own, but extroverted intuition is about experiencing the world for how it is and being able to learn how to be improvisational in the outside world, to experiment. Whereas if you think about introverted thinking as your, your laboratory, your internal thinking space, extroverted intuition is more about where you go to form hypotheses. So Albert Einstein, as we've mentioned, is someone that mostly he would do a lot of his working in his head, that he would do a lot of thinking about the, he would do a lot of thought experiments, but typically it was when he was out in the world playing with his kids or doing something out in the world that the dots were connected for him on those ideas. So we spend a lot of time thinking about things and when we get to a place in particular where we feel stuck on ideas, usually we can go experience the outside world, go enjoy things, just even enjoy nature, go to a, a somewhere where you enjoy, something that is almost allowing you to turn off that introverted thinking, not completely, but it's something that is letting it kind of rest so that your extroverted intuition uh, takes over. And a lot of the times you'll have like an aha moment while you're out into the world and appreciating things. So that extroverted intuition is about that pattern recognition. It's about allowing you to speculate on the world. It's allowing you to take risks. It's allowing you to again, hypothesize and experiment and try things. It's also responsible for optimism and allowing you to see the possibilities. It's about opening loops to be able to see, you know, where all of these pieces in life fall together in a way that could be helpful for yourself or humanity or whatever you're working on, right? So it's about opening those possibilities. That is all about what extroverted intuition is. And a lot of these concepts in this program are going to fit uh, within developing that extroverted intuition. Because when you develop your extroverted intuition, your extroverted feeling, inferior function, sometimes comes along with it. People start to like you more because you're optimistic, because you're smiling, because you're charismatic, you're lovely, um, and you're bringing something to the world. You're bringing and you're creating joy for others. So people kind of like you for that in the process. Whereas if we try to use our extroverted feeling function on its own, we're gonna kind of falter and seem a little fake and seem like we're trying to push too hard. That tertiary function of introverted sensing is typically responsible for some of our desire for security. Sometimes it makes us fearful. Sometimes it allows us to spend too much time inside, especially when looped with the introverted thinking function. It could be really easy for us to convince ourselves that because we had one bad experience that we'll continue to go out into the world and have that same experience every time. Introverted sensing is very rigid in the way that extroverted thinking is in its opposite, that it's very open. Introverted sensing is about adapting practicality to life. And sometimes that means not being so good at that. Sometimes that means that 
paperwork is a challenge. Sometimes that means grinding it out and just sitting and, and having a, um, a, a negative relationship with time. Sometimes introverted sensing can be a part of that too, where you're learning in the positive way, you're learning how to sit with it. You're learning how to slow down. You're learning how to just be. And that means also taking care of your body and eating good food and listening to what your body is telling you when it needs something, when you need something physical. That could be sex, that could be food, that could be exercise, that could be whatever it is that your body needs, that means respecting that. So while introverted sensing is a little bit lower in your cognitive stack, it's something that still needs to be respected. And usually you can gamify some of your introverted sensing needs through your introverted thinking by like counting calories or, um, yeah, counting calories is probably one of the best examples or doing research around, you know, maybe eating the right kind of macronutrients and learning how to exercise and doing research on routines, but then using your extroverted intuition to maybe try a different kind of gym that you're not used to or to work with a nutritionist or to, you know, be willing to gain information through experience in the outside world. And then that inferior function is extroverted feeling, which is what we struggle with the most, is uh, generally it's emotions, but it's understanding how to really fit in with the group. I think, I think we inherently understand that we have emotional experiences. I don't think that's what it is. I think that's typically what is said about INTPs is that we are not great at identifying emotions, um, but I think I think we feel emotions. We, f we definitely feel emotions all the time. You know, we feel embarrassment when we say something that, you know, someone has a negative response to, especially someone close to us. So we feel emotions, we just don't always consider them. So I think it's important to develop your ext extroverted feeling through your introverted thinking and through your extroverted intuition, through joy, through playfulness, and through sometimes through that introverted sensing where you have to learn how to be patient and sit, especially when you're working with your partner to work through an emotional experience. Sometimes you just need to learn how to sit with them and listen and be patient and not resist that emotions are not going to help the situation because often through trying to logic logicify <laughs> to trying to put logic into an emotional situation can sometimes be abusive behavior you know you're not val you're invalidating someone's experience by telling them that you know emotions don't matter right now or something like that right so being able to sit with someone's emotions it's going to be an important part of growth and we're going to go through a lot of that in this program as well um, but mostly it's going to happen through your your other functions as a way to to help you grow and develop uh you know who you are as a person and kind of round all of that out so i'm going to give you some tips on how to let that extroverted feeling out because extroverted feeling is is you know it's an extroverted function that means your emotions need to come out they need to be put out into the world somehow and i know for me i process them process them best when i can talk it out because if i rely on my thinking sometimes i can ignore key points and sometimes we get muddied and confused about what is extroverted thinking and, and or what is extroverted feeling and what is introverted thinking sometimes our logical arguments are emotional arguments. <laughs> Sometimes when you're trying to correct someone's grammar, that's an emotional choice because it makes you upset that someone's not using the proper grammar, right? So understanding that there are situations like that that are emotional situations and identifying them can help you grow and understand and have respect for how other people use their emotions as well. So for me, um, it really started to take shape when I understood that these functions don't just operate in a vacuum, meaning they don't just operate one at a time. These are things that are usually working together in some sort of way, sometimes negatively, like an introverted thinking and an introverted sensing loop that's convincing you to stay inside and be a hermit and not go out into the world. Or sometimes it's your extroverted intuition and your extroverted feeling 
having more of a parent-child relationship where your extroverted intuition is going out into the outside world and having fun and experiencing things and then your extroverted feeling gets satisfied because people maybe have an emotional response to you being fun and playful and thoughtful and informative, right? That's how you form friendships, by being that way. And then you, uh, you form emotional bonds that way. So sometimes if you're going out deliberately to try to make an emotional bond, that can trip us up versus going out and just being yourself, having fun, being joyous, and letting go, right? So, you know, sometimes when, you, when you're able to activate the bonus of your introverted thinking and extroverted intuition together, that is really where you shine. That is the genius zone, as Personality Hacker likes to put it. Though That is your genius spot. That's the G spot, if you will, of your personality, is connecting those two points. So when you can really get in tune with your introverted thinking and your extroverted intuition, playing with each other and playing nice with each other, where your intuition is letting you open up and letting you be yourself and your introverted thinking is correcting some things but really being open to possibilities and asking more questions than it's answering that's really when life starts to open up that's when you get into a better cosmic calibration space and i guess the last bit of that too is understanding the dichotomy between what are called your learning functions and your decision-making functions. Your thinking and feeling functions are the decision-making functions and your intuitive and sensing functions are the learning styles. So you're gonna be taking in information through your intuition and your sensing and you're gonna be putting things out into the world through your thinking and feeling functions. So understanding that, again, these functions don't live in a vacuum that your introverted thinking is gonna have some extroverted feeling uh, associated with it. Again, if you're trying to correct someone um, based on you know whether it's their grammar or their logic or whatever, instead of having patience, you decide to be an outbursty to them or give them a direct answer and not have patience for their emotional state. That's an emotional choice. To ignore them is an emotional choice to not take them seriously is an emotional choice. So understanding the dichotomy of that, like once you have a better grip on that dichotomy, you'll be able to have a little bit more patience and a little bit more empathy in particular for the way that you might correct someone or the way you might speak to someone. And the same with your intuition and sensing. Again, with your intuition being something that is about opening loops, introverted sensing is kind of about you know rigidity and sometimes closing loops right so introverted sensing is going to be responsible for finishing projects and doing the hard work that you might not want to do whereas extroverted intuition is going to help you start 30 projects and introverted sensing is going to be the thing that's going to help you finish those projects typically right if you don't have someone that you can pay to help you finish those projects so that dichotomy is really important to understand and i understand there's a lot that i threw at you it's a very um it's a bit of a complex concept, so if you want to check out on dopamine.teachable.com, there's a free Myers-Briggs course that you can check out. I don't know how much longer it's going to be free, actually, but it's it's free for now as of this recording. So you can go there and check that out to, um, to sign up and go through that course to understand it. And there's also Personality Hacker is a great resource for understanding Myers-Briggs functions and all of that stuff. But for the most part, this course is going to be a little bit more about talking in a um, holistic way, like a logical way, and um, trying to share my own personal life experiences. So when I talk about the extroverted intuition, introverted sensing dynamic, one of the things that sticks out to me is that part of what I have, I have a mental illness called cyclothymia, which is a low-grade bipolar disorder. Uh, it's high functioning, but it's uh, kind of keeps me sort of teetering between depression and uh, hypomania. And it can be a challenge to manage myself. So when I'm exploring my extroverted intuition, for example, I, I'm not going to go out drinking and I'm not going to go out do any, do, go to do anything that could be risky from a self-harm perspective, which I think is good for anyone to take into account. But I've had situations in my past where I've ended up in the hospital, I drank too much, and um, you know I didn't have my introverted sensing developed enough to understand my own limits. 
So I think that's why it's important to listen to other aspects of your humanity, of your being, to make sure that you're not going too far, but you're not using introverted sensing prematurely to prevent you from even trying new things. So again, it's it's a balance. Whereas you should most mostly let into your intuition lead the way in, in external uh, situations, but sometimes that introverted sensing needs to be listened to where it says, okay, this is too dangerous. This is not good for us. This is um, something that, um, that I need to pull back from and, and do something else instead. So, so what is cosmic calibration really? Uh, to me, that means understanding yourself, other people, and your place in the universe. I think that's one of the struggles that INTPs have in general is feeling like, like I mentioned in the beginning, that they have this feeling of wanting to be something, to be, uh, to have a sense of notoriety, that they care about their reputation. They want people to love you, right? You, you want to be loved and cared for, and you want to be respected for your work, and you want to be able to, I think there's something in us that wants to travel, that we want to experience life, that we want to contribute to some sort of vast uh, part of the experience. Chances are when you started learning about being an INTP, you started learning about how Albert Einstein is an INTP. Now it's really easy for an INTP to look at that and be like, oh, that's fantastic. But um, you know, not everyone fits his level of genius. That doesn't mean that because you're an INTP that you're going to be that type of genius person. Uh, but certainly the type of capability that he has fits within our style of genius. You know, and we're going to learn how we can apply that style of genius to other things in our life. Because not everyone's going to have the same circumstances that he hit, he had. And not everyone's going to have the same resources or the same life circumstances. I mean, he was pre-World War and he was like dealing with all sorts of crazy big picture things. And he was also in a world that wasn't thinking about things the way that a lot of people think about these days didn't have a level of exposure that we have access to, to kind of try to find a way to cut through the noise. He, he maybe had different circumstances in that way, right? So, you know, there's, there's all sorts of things to consider, sometimes considering our own biases when we're trying to develop ourselves and how we can take all of that into this cosmic calibration. I know for me, for a long time, you know, my story is that when I was a kid, when I was six years old, I knew that there was enough inconsistencies with my life. My parents were going through this sort of religious searching phase in their life. And I know that they were going through this searching, but in the midst of this searching, they were trying to like bring me along with them. And while they were learning, there was enough inconsistency for me to see, even as a six-year-old, that it made, me, made it very difficult for me to just subscribe to whatever they were attaching themselves to. I was consistently confused. I didn't really know what any of it meant. I didn't know why they were doing this. I didn't know um, anything about, you know, what was going on in that in their lives and why my brain was thinking the way that it was thinking. Um, I had been exposed, even at such a young age, I'd say between six and 12 especially, I had been exposed to so many people that were just living their lives. Like they were, it seemed like everyone just knew what to do. <laughs> that everyone had this notion of uh, you're supposed to be polite to people in this sort of way. You're supposed to have these social niceties. You're supposed to be good at small talk. You're supposed to be um, someone that just like hugs people and is warm and you don't have a monotone voice <laughs> and, and you have emotional expression and uh, you smile all the time or you are someone that is uh, just fun and lighthearted. You're not dealing with depression. You're not dealing with dark thoughts. You're not asking difficult questions. You're not standing out in the crowd. You know, those are all sorts of society, societal questions that came up for me as I was growing up. And I still have those challenges, but I feel like nowadays more than ever, I have a, um, a more consistent calibration with who I am as an individual mixed with a calibration with society and the people that I work with and care about, right? So I think some of the fears that an INTP has with calibrating themselves to the universe, to society, to, you know, being a person that like makes a living and 
does something with human in humanity, I think there's a fear of losing our individuality. And in that process, like part of what this cosmic calibration is, is making sure that you're not doing that, that you're not trying to force yourself, you know, a square peg into a round hole situation. You're not trying to make it so that you're forcing yourself to be a feeler. You're forcing, but you're learning how to naturally be more of an open, thoughtful, intuitive, caring, intelligent person that has their own sense of spirituality, however you define it. You can define it through a general love of the universe or through religion or whatever works for you, right? Um, so some of the ideas that we're gonna talk about throughout this program involve uh, learning how to show a little bit of patience for yourself, to, to talk about those societal things, talking about those challenges that we face when comparing ourselves to society. The general idea of comparison, especially when you're doing creative work, that could be such, such a challenge when you are trying to do new things. But in order to do new things, sometimes you have to cultivate a community and sometimes you have to uh, emulate people a little bit. And we have this, I know as INTPs, me, I have this relationship with, again, individuality, which means sometimes I wanna stick out when I haven't really figured out all of the data that allows me to stick out from that. You know what I mean? Like, you have to learn what is before you can subvert it, right? It's like about learning the rules before you can subvert the rules. Uh, some of the other things is accessing joy, learning how to smile more, you know, at least using your whole face a little bit, learning how to, um, there is some sense of fake it till you make it, so you learn habits over time. Um, there's some things about developing your different, your other functions in terms of your introverted sensing and extroverted feeling, in terms of learning how to have a little bit more patience with yourself and with each other, learning when to slow down, learning when you need to just kind of buckle down and grind it out and do some of the work that you need to do. Because part of this is also subverting, again, the stereotypes of an INTP and not just saying, I'm an INTP, therefore I'm lazy, I'm just gonna be a hot mess, I'm gonna throw everything everywhere, I'm not gonna, I'm already smarter than everyone, I don't need to learn new things, <laughs> I don't need to think about the universe, like, no, that's, that's not, mm -mm, no way. We're gonna subvert those stereotypes because you are a person, you are an individual. You are not just an INTP. You are someone that is, you might be a, a mother, a father, a, a, a someone in relation to someone else. You might be an artist, a creative person, a videographer, a writer. Um, you know, you might be an engineer, you might be a software engineer. You might be someone that has this breadth of identity. For me, I'm, I'm, I was born in Philadelphia I lived there for 25 years. I moved to San Diego for seven years. I was married, I got a divorce. I'm now in Rochester, New York in this wonderful apartment with my amazing partner who has been like the best part of my life. And uh, there's just been so much color to my life. My father is an ESFJ, my mother is an ISFP. I have, um, have had difficulties with religion growing up, which we're gonna talk about in as respectful a way as, we, as possible throughout this program. Um, and also, you know, I love playing poker. I love graphic design. I'm a multimedia designer and creative consultant. So I like doing photo, video, graphic design, audio production, all of that stuff. I like framing shots. I love thinking about the universe. I love astronomy. I love all sorts of colors. I love experiencing outside. I love the birds chirping that you can hear. I love sunshine. I, I love so many things. I love video games. I don't know if you can see, there's a link right here in the background with my Nintendo Switch. I've got all sorts of stuff in the background that represent who I am. Um, I've got a, a, a thing of Thanos here <laughs> that I'll show some photos of later, you know, maybe if I switch locations. Um, I've got things around me that represent who I am and, and, you know, part of accessing joy is learning about who you are as a person beyond just being an INTP, thinking about the things that you love, that you care about, that you could surround yourself with, that give you a sense of self-worth. Right, so we're gonna talk about accessing that sense of joy. We're gonna talk about connection. We're gonna talk about, con and, and all of this stuff 
is about doing it in a way that's going to be, again, natural to you as an INTP. This isn't about faking it till you make it. This is about tapping into your logic center to make all of this make sense for you. Because most of the time with a lot of these topics, it's just about switching that light. It's about changing it up just a little bit, just a, just a logic flip so that you can start to understand how something can be viewed from a slightly different perspective. Especially as younger INTPs, some younger INTPs can feel like, and maybe you felt like in that, at this point in your life at some point, that you know, you know everything. That something is like, it logically makes sense. And you're just like, you know what? Yeah, that's, that's it, you know? And then you're done, right? So part of this is about learning to expand your curiosity so that you can continue to ask questions without feeling like you need to have an answer every time. No one likes to know it all, you know? And the point of being an INTP is to be helpful for the people that are ready for you to help them, but also to listen for when you need to just listen more. That, you know, some people just need to work through an idea themselves. They need to vent, but sometimes they need to borrow your introverted thinking by using your superpower of asking questions, right? Of being able to just listen to what they're trying to say and coax it out of them. Like, it's not your job to just be like, well, you're an idiot. You need to fix this and you need to go do this and get out of my way, right? No, that's not gonna help anyone. No one's gonna like you that way. <laughs> and, you know, you're just not going to, you're not gonna connect with people. You're not gonna find your tribe that way, which is part of what we're gonna talk about as well. So this whole program is something that, it's gonna be an audio program. This, this is for video, so I can promote it on YouTube and all that stuff. But essentially, the program's gonna be an audio course so that you can take it with you on the go. You can listen while you're doing other bits of work. Um, I know that we're really good at absorbing information as we're going about the rest of our day. So what I would really encourage is that when you sign up for this course, for this program, for the, uh, the, the Cosmic Calibration program, that you can maybe take it out in to nature with you, you know, go out and do something. Don't just listen to it while you are sitting in front of your computer and doing work. Like I won't discourage you from doing that, but if you have the opportunity to go outside, go be around some water, go be around nature, birds chirping, like something like that, that you can get out of your shell a little bit and appreciate it because one of our superpowers is connecting all of the things in nature, in the universe, to each other. And we can't always do that when we're by ourselves, right? There's always a time when, yes, we need to spend a lot of time by ourselves because we're collecting a lot of information, but we can't collect anything new if we're not going out in nature and experiencing it. So it's kind of like, if you think about mixing colors together, if you mix a couple colors together, you can get this beautiful mix of the two colors. If you just kind of mix it a little bit and you sort of work through, uh, you get the color that you want. And then when you need new colors, you go out and get new colors. But if you mix those two or three colors together rapidly and too much and too fast and um, spend too much time too too much time stirring around the same colors the same ideas you're going to get a really muddy color and it's just going to be uh you're just going to get you're not going to be able to to get new information right you're gonna, not going to be able to get new color added into that so the idea here is that for you to go out you go out into the world to collect new information and you come back and you work through it in your mind. You do some research to kind of accentuate your points, um, maybe to collect more information, but nothing beats the outside world. And I don't mean literally just nature, but you can go into coffee shops and observe people. You can go to an improv class. You can go get involved in some sort of community thing, something that allows you to get outside of your normal comfort zone so you can experience new things and you know, a lot of people meet some of their best friends that way. Some people meet their partner that way. You get new jobs that way. Being able to connect the dots between people and between situations in the outside world is really, again, what our strength is. And it gives us energy. That's one of the things that we feel it's really easy for us to sell ourselves on is this feeling that, it, that 
by going out into the world, we're going to be depleted. And we assume that because we've done that before, we're going to be depleted again. And I'm not interested in telling you that that's true, <laughs> that, that we're going to be depleted. Um, I think it's true to an extent, meaning you're gonna go out, collect information, and you're by getting tired, your brain is essentially telling you, okay, we need to process all of this. That's what that means, right? But you're not gonna get tired until you go out and accept all of that information. So, you know, going out with the fear that you're going to get tired is, you know, is counterintuitive to the growth of who we are as an INTP. So going out into the world, experiencing things, collecting information, like soaking it up so that you can go home and figure out all these new connection points and then when you go out into the world, you might have something that you're excited to go try. You might have a, a new reason to go out into the world and really listen to yourself when you're out in those experiences. When you're doing things that you really love and enjoy, if you're having fun and, and being joyous in an improv situation or at an event that you really love or playing video games with a group of friends at like a, you know, a public space or something like that, that is so much fun. It brings you joy, it gives you energy, you get really excited about it. I know you do, I know you can think of situations where it's been like that, right? But there are definitely situations that do drain our energy a little bit, and we're gonna talk about those as well in the course. So we're gonna talk about all of these things. Mainly it's about accessing joy, about creating spaces for you that you can enjoy being in, uh, that you can love uh, waking up to and going to and, uh, you know, trying to surround yourself with good light, with good, uh, with, with, you know, round objects and shapes that kind of bring a sense of joy, some sense of color, and, you know, practicing smiling and making jokes and throwing things in a little bit more, right? So that's really what it's all about. And then all of that leads to this sense of gratitude and really developing a sense of gratitude within yourself because gratitude is probably, gratitude mixed with humility, I think are the two key points to consider so that if you don't decide to go through this program, like you can at least take away from this free intro video that there, the two key takeaways are humility and gratitude. That being humble in who you are as a thinker that because you're capable of a, a deep level of thought, it doesn't mean you have everything figured out. It doesn't mean that you are good at every level of intelligence. There are people who are really great at kinesthetic intelligence, visual spatial intelligence, musical intelligence, not only based on the, the multiple intelligences theory, but I'm sure you've experienced and seen it throughout your life that people are intelligent in different ways. And just because you have a certain type of intelligence doesn't mean that you can put yourself above other people in you know a natural social hierarchy and i think as people we're always fighting for some sort of social hierarchy and i think that is our way of doing that by saying we are smarter than other people is actually more of an extroverted feeling inferior thing and not really a uh, introverted thinking dominant thing right so and then that sense of um gratitude really comes from understanding your place in the universe. Like I said, that significance and insignificant piece at the same exact time. It is about understanding that you are this amazing grand person that has so much influence within your sphere of influence, the people that you're able to connect to that love who you are and love the fact that you're able to give them straightforward, direct, wonderful information and also understanding your insignificance in the vast scope of the universe, that you are a little tiny minuscule piece of the puzzle. But because of that, you've had this opportunity to exist. That 13 billion years of evolution and expansion and hot gases and cooling rocks and water and growth and, and uh, molecules and all of this stuff has led to your existence. Like, just thinking about that when things get rough is amazing enough of a thought to get you out of that rut. So I would implore you, please click the link below to check out the rest of the course, the rest of the program, the Cosmic Calibration Program for INTPs. Or So if you know an INTP, you are an INTP, this would be really great for you to connect. I'll be sharing more of my story throughout this to share how I've grown in all sorts of ways. Um, 
share my biases around uh, everything that I've been sort of learning through this process um, and learning how to understand more depth of who you are as an INTP, the superpowers that you bring to the world and how you can just kind of wake up in the morning and be happy to exist. That's really what this is all about. So again, click the link below. I would really appreciate it if you join. If not, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave questions in the link below. You can also check out dopamine.life, which is my podcast, and hit me up at Let's Go See Notes on all the social channels if you want to connect with me. If you have any questions about um, what other things are in this course, I'm happy to give you information. And even if you don't pick this up and you want to connect with me and ask a couple questions, I do have consulting options and I'm just willing to answer questions if you ask me directly on Twitter and things like that, right? So if, if you need extended one-on-one -on -one time, that costs money. If you want to go through the course and do it at your own leisure, that costs money. But if you want to hit me up on Twitter and I'll respond at my convenience whenever I can, I can certainly do that too. My goal is to help people. I'm certainly humbled by the fact that people are willing to listen to me and connect with me. I love the fact that I am both significant and insignificant in the grand scope of the universe. And I want to share that with you as we go through this cosmic calibration program. So thank you for being here. I'll see you inside. Let's go do this thing.